fragrant water lily that have a white blossom. There's a great blue heron I heard. Quack, quack, quack. George Weymouth knows birds. The underneath this wing tip coming up like that. We went down to Wasissa this morning um, with Jimmy Dulac and George Weymouth. And they are both certified green guides. Jimmy owns a company right there on the Wasissa. He rents canoes and kayaks. And George is an expert guider. He specializes in birds. <laughs> George is your man if you want to go out and really learn a lot about where you are. We saw plenty of attractive birds that day, but one we were hoping to see eluded us. Limpkins are popular with bird watchers, especially as they become a rarer sight around here. Well, generally if you're here in the summer, you'll see them. Um, and they're a pomaceous snail or apple snail, which gets about this big. It's an aquatic snail. Yeah, is mostly what they feed on. When I first moved here in 86, they were common along the Ocala River. And then the hydrilla came, and then they started using herbicides to kill the hydrilla. And next thing you know, the snails basically plummeted in population. And next thing you know, the limpkins were gone. And most of what we see on the surface here is hydrilla. You can feel these little sort of roughness to it. Looks like it's got particles of sand glued to it. This is hydrilla. While this invasive species has altered the ecology of the Wasissa, it remains a largely healthy river. This is the Wasissa River. It's just a, it's a spring-fed river. There's 12 springs along the first mile or so of the river. We went to the Blue Spring, which is about a mile down the river from the headwater here. And it's about a 50-foot spring, 50-foot deep. A little deeper when the water's up where it's supposed to be, but we haven't had any rain lately. There's deep water there. It's real clear. Usually you can see the bottom of 50 foot. Okay, maybe we didn't see any limpkins. But perhaps wanting to ensure that we got a good bird show anyway. A flock of ibis landed nearby us as we returned from Big Blue Spring. There's so many of them. Rob, when those birds are breeding, the bill and legs get Brilliant red. A lot of people relate to birds. When you go out in the wild, you might see a deer, you might see an otter, but you're gonna see birds for sure. We saw quite a few birds. I'm hearing a pileated woodpecker right now flying over us. All kind of wildlife, you know, there's bears and otters and deer and turkeys and all kind of birds, like George said, just every kind of bird you can think of. It's one of the most pristine places in Florida, I think, that I've been to. So I just love the river, and I got into Green Guides. A friend of mine kind of turned me on to them, and it was the greatest thing, I, one of the greatest things I've ever done. The best thing about the Green Guides, I would say, is all the people you meet. Just great, like-minded people, people like George. Cynthia here. I was just telling George we have some Wakala blueberries in here. <laughs> They're just great people and learned a lot about the area. I lived here for 10 or 12 years and learned more stuff than I ever, ever knew about the whole area. You become more informed. Water hemlock right there. You appreciate the area more and we're trying to help the tourists that might come into our area appreciate our area more. We have it all here in this area, we really do, and we're proud of it. I want to thank George and Cynthia, and especially Jim. He brought his biggest canoe to keep the camera stable and safe. 
and he paddled me around, and I'm not a light guy. For Dimensions, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas. Thank you.